Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Engineering Student Experience Podcast. I'm Paul Nissenson from the Mechanical Engineering Department at Cal Poly Pomona. In the previous episode, I revisited with a couple engineering instructors at the end of the spring term, and we discussed our experiences of what it was like to teach during the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. In today's episode, I will be revisiting with a couple engineering students, Human Kazri and Robert Freeman, to find out how they survived the spring term. I initially spoke with Human and Robert back in episode 11, which was recorded in March, just as our university moved to online instruction. Well, two months have passed between episode 11 and today's interview. The spring term had just ended, and Human and Robert share their experiences of how they dealt with the lack of contact with other students, with their instructors, and with friends and family. They also talked about how their instructors adjusted to this bizarre situation and their future plans after graduation. Before we get to the interview, I have a few housekeeping items that I'd like to address. The first item is, this conversation was recorded several days before the protests related to the use of force by police exploded across the U.S. and the world, so you'll understand why Human, Robert, and I don't mention the protest during the interview. The next item I want to mention is that since we had to record this episode online, the sound quality is less than ideal, but I think it's sufficient enough for the podcast. It seems that the sound quality of many podcasts have suffered somewhat during this pandemic as well, due to a lack of access to recording studios and the best equipment out there. I probably sound like a broken record on this point, so I'll try my best not to mention this in future episodes. The last thing I want to mention is, if you're enjoying this podcast, there are a few easy ways that you can support it. You can subscribe to the podcast using your favorite podcast app, such as Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and many others. You can rate the podcast and leave comments on whatever app you use to listen to the podcast. And finally, you can help spread the word about the podcast by telling your friends, family, classmates, or whoever you think would benefit from this podcast. If you have any comments about this episode, feel free to email me at tesepodcast at gmail.com, and I will place the email address in the show notes. I'll personally read each email and try my best to respond to them all. And now I bring you our conversation. I hope you enjoy it. All right. Well, I'm checking back in with two wonderful engineering students, Uman Kazrayi and Robert Freeman. First of all, congratulations for making it through the semester. I know it's been a crazy semester. Thank you. Thanks for having us back. Yeah, no, thank you for you know, just taking some time to have this conversation on a Saturday afternoon when you could be uh, enjoying your Saturday a bit more. But uh, I'm really glad that we're able to, to check back in and see how you guys have been doing. So for the listener, you know, they can go back and check out the first episode where you appeared to get maybe more of your full background. Uh, but for the listener, can you briefly you know, give like a, a, a snapshot of, of who you are and what major you're in and anything relevant to you being a student? Uh, who man here? So mechanical engineering student. Uh, this is my fourth and final year at Cal Poly Pomona. I finally graduated. Uh, yeah, so I started working full time like the Monday after finals week. Uh, that's been interesting, especially with the whole COVID nineteen and uh, work from home situation. But it's going so. And I'm Robert. I also just graduated in uh, mechanical engineering at CPP. During my time there, I was on the Baja SAE team, so that was a huge part of my life on campus. And then yeah, now just experiencing the rapid change in life and plans and now getting to ready to go into the workforce in a COVID-19 environment should be interesting. How has uh, your family been doing? Uh, have you had a chance to see people like friends and maybe extended family or have you been kind of just sheltering in place? Uh, personally, like I've been like sheltering in place like for a good chunk of time, but I'd still go out and see some friends. Like just for example, yesterday I saw my friends 
and we were just riding on our bikes or I guess motorcycles. So we have our helmets, so we have a bit more protection, I guess. And we just went out, grabbed some food, came back, talked, hung out. Yeah, simple stuff. Not much. Yeah. Are you staying six feet apart? We got our helmets on. I mean, that's like a giant face mask, right? Much. And we have a Bluetooth uh, headset too. So we're good. And how about you, Robert? Have you been venturing out of the house at all to, to see friends or extended family? Or have you been just staying at home? Uh, I've definitely been going outside here and there. Um, lots of mountain biking, definitely with friends. We're able to be very out in nature, uh, maintain that distance apart, but still uh, you know, enjoy each other's company. I've seen like my grandparents. I was able to go visit them on Mother's Day, but I was talking to them through the uh, screen door while I was able to stand far away from them while they sat inside the house. I was living with my parents, so I definitely have seen them. And then, yeah, friends here and there. We've, you know, met up in parking lots, you know, at the malls or whatever. We've been able to set up chairs in a big old circle and still enjoy each other and talk while maintaining that distance between each other. Mm. What's the biggest thing you both miss about having complete freedom of movement? It's interesting is I notice how much it's already affected me. Like I've been reading books and they talk about like handing, like shaking hands or like handing each other a piece of paper in my head, like alarm bells go off because I'm like, they shouldn't be do that, doing that, do the social distancing. And so I definitely just miss like, it feels like you're always looking over your back for something that's not there when you're outside. Uh, for me, it's just, I miss like having evening plans. Like, I can't go to the gym. Uh, I can't do anything Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like, evening. Pretty much, like, the main thing for me to see my friends is, like, we go on our uh, bikes and we go see each other or we go canyon riding or something like that. Yeah, usually this time of year, right after I'm done grading finals, uh, this is usually when I start thinking about going on a short vacation somewhere. <laughs> and yeah, that's not going to happen. So a lot of people are reporting that they're sense of time is all kind of disrupted and distorted. The separation between weekends and weekdays are kind of blurred and the separation between, you know, maybe going to school during the day and staying at home at night is, you know, that, that sharp distinction is gone because you're always home. Have you guys been noticing that as well? For me, I guess there's a smaller degree. I was still an intern. I was still, I was able to work from home as an intern. So it kind of helped me differentiate my weekdays from my weekends. But like on a smaller scale, I'd say like my days start have been starting later and my nights have been ending later. So like I'd wake up at like 10 or 12 or something like that. And I go to bed like at two at times or like I think sometimes it's stretched since like three or four. I can attest to that issue. And a lot of other people I know are having that same issue where their sleep schedule is becoming non-existent and almost irrelevant to their life anymore. You know, it used to be I had to get to bed at 12 so I could get a decent night's sleep before my class in the morning. But now it's like, it almost doesn't matter if I wake up at 8 a.m. or if I wake up at 12, the day kind of looks the same. So there's like, there's less order to my day and it kind of helps you lose track. Did that mess up your final schedule by chance? Cause I know no, it didn't. Most of my finals were in the afternoon. So when I had to wake up, I was able to wake up thankfully, but on the day-to-day -day basis, it was like, oh, wow. 12 is getting pretty late. Maybe time to go to bed before 3 a.m. Dang. I had like uh, two morning finals, one at 7 a.m. and the other was at like 9. And I was like, I try to go to sleep, but it's like I, I was so used to sleeping later that's like I only ended up getting like three or four hours for that final. Yeah, I did the same. So all your classes over the last couple months have probably been taught through Zoom or maybe there's videos posted on the uh, campuses learning management system, which is Blackboard for us. How have you and your classmates adapted to this move to online instruction? It's like, what are the, some of the challenges that you've encountered? Um, has access to, to good Wi-Fi been a problem for you or your classmates? Uh, and have you heard of anything else that your classmates have been struggling with? I haven't heard of anybody with Wi-Fi access, particularly in my circle. Um, it's definitely been interesting adapting personally just to managing these classes and managing how to best learn from each professor and you know what lecture I really need to watch and which it's just better for me to get the textbook out and start teaching myself 
I find the issue really lies with the the biggest one I or yeah the biggest one I found from professors and really affected the teaching was the professors not being able to get feedback from the students they didn't know if they're going too fast or too slow because just about every student sitting there with their mic off and camera off and I mean honestly I wasn't even paying attention during my lectures yeah I was going to actually ask you why uh, why do you think that you and your students decided to turn their mics off because probably 95 plus percent of my students and I know this is the, it's also the case for other faculty as well they also experienced a lot of blank screens with students names on them on zoom why did you turn off your mics and do you think that affected your your ability to learn and pay attention so first it's a mix between my classes for the engineering classes I would admit like my screen was blank for a good chunk or like I'd respond uh, and just say jokes like we're still here professor don't worry uh, but another class like uh, my fun classes if you remember from the last podcast uh, my beer and wine like one of them was uh, like he would have the, our cameras up and I'd respond that way and it was like very interactive because it's kind of more opinionated and so you're a bit more obligated to like speak up a bit but also because like they're not so strict so I had a few hats, and so I was just like change hats every now and then during the class. Was there any wine or beer involved that made you more animated, more willing to engage? No. I think another thought on that is I have a great ability to zoom out or zone out while in classes. So, you know, I may end up doing something weird and I wouldn't want to caught on camera. And it, it's just kind of, I think for me at least, it's weird bringing like, 30 random classmates into like my bedroom or my my apartment or whatever you know and it's just like a personal space that like people that usually see that are like close friends not my professors and classmates another issue and it's like that made it per hard for me to speak up is the same issue that professors are having where they couldn't I couldn't read the class either and so I wouldn't know if someone else was about to talk or if like I was the only one that didn't get it sometimes then I'm not the one to speak up stuff like that kind of helped me I just didn't feel as connected with the classroom the same way were you guys more willing to participate through the chat feature than you were speaking up yeah I'd probably use that more yeah the chat feature was kind of nice because you can just quickly respond to someone or like the teacher can one of the students can ask a question in a chat and the teacher can continue with the lecture because it takes them a while to like recognize the chat and like find a good stopping point but then you're able to respond and help the other student yeah, even during a final um, where we were all on Zoom together, I actually tried to use the chat feature first to get the professor's attention because I didn't want to break the silence of the whole class to ask him the question. So overall, did you feel like there was much engagement at all between the students and the, the faculty? Or do you feel like compared to, say, like a normal face to face lecture, did you feel like there was significantly less uh, engagement? And how do you think instructors could increase that level of engagement to make it a more, let's say, welcoming environment or just to make it easier for you to engage more? Honestly, it's just the professors and their teaching style because one professor, he had a PDF document and like he will talk about the theory, then like he would have an example prompt from the book, like copy and paste it into the PDF file. And like he'll just talk about that. So it's like you're kind of just reading to me and you're not really teaching. So it's like, well, time to go to the book and do the practice prompts to figure this out. But then you have another professor that um, he recorded his lectures and he would give them to us like the weekend beforehand. And then when we had class, he used that as an opportunity for us to ask questions or do example prompts or something like that. Yeah, like I, don't know, all, I won't lie, like all the professors do have Zoom sessions, but it just seems really awkward at times. Like ask some questions during then because they have to make the opportunity for all the other students, usually one on one. So it's just with the class and professor's teaching style, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's, we have no experience or most of us have no experience teaching online at all, let alone, you know, just with Zoom. So I think it's a giant learning experience for us all. Yeah, I found the professors that were able to teach the most effectively or I felt that handled the situation most effectively weren't the ones that actually held their lectures um, in Zoom. Like together with the whole class, I found that the ones that like pre-recorded the lecture and then just held office hours to ask questions 
I know I did that happen with like Suchia's controls class and it was like really effective that like it seemed that through that whole time that there's questions being asked and people were kind of driving forward and it felt more like we we're actually learning together. So do you prefer to have live Zoom sessions for teaching or do you prefer to have the videos recorded ahead of time you know, made available? you know, online for you to watch at your leisure before class and then using class time for, as you were talking about, like question and answer? I definitely preferred having the pre-recorded lectures. Um, it seemed that they flowed more smoothly because the professor wouldn't need to sit and kind of, like, kind of hope that someone would ask a question. Along with that, the professors that pre-record their lectures tend to actually give us more, more information and more like the slides and handwritten notes and stuff for us to be able to use, which is to help, like help my learning process overall was well my professor that did online lectures with the whole class wouldn't actually put up his notes because he didn't want us to not come to lecture. And I think that hurt us because then it was all flying by so quick. Having a pre-record is nice because you can always watch it after the class meeting, which is something that happened a lot. Um, but then again, you have other professors that like their pre-recorded aren't the best. They'll go over stuff like they just know it, and so you, students can't ask questions or anything, and so like they just think you know what's going on. But the thing about Suchi is like he was very, very in depth, and I think he made his videos longer than the class time because he was able to put so much more information. He didn't really have to stop it, like to take like get our feedback and see how we thought. Then he used the class period to actually see our feedback and like ask any questions. Yeah, and I've actually just uh, yesterday finished an interview with, with uh, they're talking about Nolan Suchia, uh, who's a colleague of mine in the mechanical engineering department at Cal Poly Pomona. And we also had an interview with a different uh, faculty member as well in engineering. And so he was talking about his strategy as well and how he thought it, it worked really well for him. I think for him, though, that it was also like a personal accommodation issue because he has two young children and he might not be able to teach in real time because he had to watch them. So how did your instructors teaching evolve over the past couple of months? Did they make some initial missteps that they recovered from? Do you think they got better over time? Um, with my engineering professors, I'd say they pretty much stayed the same. They didn't really adapt or anything because like you're saying, it's like all of a sudden they had to pr uh, produce content for the students and figure out what they're going to be doing. One professor is the one that taught in class using the PDF. Uh, I think he didn't have class like that first w one or two weeks that like we were on a from home. But then, uh, for example, my wine class, they were changing how they're teaching. So like they had like their, they record their lectures that they post online. But then they also had during the class session, they had like this, uh, they had the key points on a PDF. And so they go through the like their material and teach it, but they'll, heavily focus on those key points? I don't think any of my professors made a strong change in how they taught after, you know, the initial, the ones that did online lectures, lectures stuck with the online lectures, the one that pre-recorded stuck with pre-recorded. I think as a whole, we all just became more comfortable with the system and that this is how it was going to be and just better adaptations and getting used to scheduling office hours through Zoom and waiting in the zoom lobby for office hours and how we're going to work together and you know any class projects we were better at just quickly getting on a zoom meeting to work together as opposed to like scheduling it maybe a week out so it just could react a lot quicker what have your exams been like how have the instructors administered exams uh, differently and you don't have to out anyone but have you noticed that there's any uh, cheating on the online tests? Uh, for exams, it's been a mix. I didn't have an experience like Robert had where like the professor had us all on a Zoom call. But uh, one of Professor Sachia, he had us do like a timed uh, exam where he opened up the test and like he'd have the PDF available. So we open it up, download it or whatever we want to. He'd say test is done at 11.50, stop in, you have an extra 20 minutes to take the, make a PDF copy of your uh, work and submit that. Uh, another one of the professors, he had an online test. And so 
there's a, a online multiple choice. So it's like it was less calculations and more theoretical. And it kind of sucked also because of the fact like he didn't the testing covering the newer material, I think we're actually missing uh, one or two chapters of the new material because of this. Did you notice any cheating going on in the online test? I know you're looks like you're avoiding that question. Uh, I plead the fifth. But um, you know, we've had I know that my third final was a uh, we had a week long to do it. So like he gave it to us at the beginning, he opened up at the beginning of the week and then he had to do Friday at midnight. And so I wouldn't doubt that. I had no idea what his expectations were like you're supposed to use because before his tests were like open note, open or open book, not really open note. But with it being like a week long, I think he's expecting us to open online. And so I think they were making it harder because like they're not surprised if anyone cheated. But then he still makes like, you know, if you know what you're doing, you can still do it. It's just now that I know, I want to see, like, I think he made a comment, one of the professors, Suchia specifically said, like, I just want to see your thought process. I think across my three ME courses I had remaining, um, they all approached it differently. I'm also was in a GE and that was an online class to begin with. And from day one, we were supposed to be, we were using respond as lockdown. And I definitely, it was a weird app to use and have it know it was recording me through a whole test and all that was definitely, you know, I'm wary of where that's stored and all that. It's a lot of data and personal information be put out there, but thankfully none of my ME professors used it. Um, Suchia, he, at the top, he would have you sign a statement saying, I did this test on my own. I didn't use any outside resources that aren't allowed, et cetera. So you kind of put that burden of guilt on yourself. And then, I mean, with his test, it's like you have to show the process. He doesn't really care about the right or wrong answer at the end of the day. He cares about are you taking the proper steps. So it makes it really hard to cheat. And then get, he's writing his own exams. In my thermal systems class, my professor actually decided once we went online that we wouldn't have any more tests. And he just increased the weight of our group design project, who I think which I think actually allowed us to learn better from the course so we could focus more on designing that project. And then in my last course um, where we took the Zoom classes together or the Zoom test together, it was just like a normal test in class. And I don't think there was a lot of cheating going on because everyone had to be in there with their mic on and there wasn't easy chances to work alone for sure. Um, but maybe people were Googling the answers or something like that sending it off to a friend or whatever but no apparent cheating one of the biggest challenges for faculty is trying to find a way to maintain the academic integrity of, of the tests and for summer classes everywhere it looks like they're all going to be online and for fall most universities so far have or many universities so far have committed to to doing online instruction from your point of view as a student what do you think is a fair way to administer these tests so that cheating will be kind of reduced down to a minimum and yet at the same time we're not intruding too much into your you know, your personal space it's really extremely tough to answer with one answer because i think in this format i mean even in the in-class format if someone wanted to cheat there was a ton of ways to make it happen. I mean, I know of people of ways people would cheat through an in-class test, no problem. Whether it's working with a partner in the class or sneaking their phone around or writing stuff on their equation sheet that shouldn't be there or something. It was all possible. I definitely think taking the tests on Zoom during the class period is like a fair game because you know that's your, your set class time you know, you're expected to be there and you just might, the professor should be willing to concede that, you know, you might have to get up to take care of your kid for a second or, you know, stuff like that, that you're still at home and in your regular life and they might hear someone talking in the background because that's just kind of the way it is. But it's definitely like, there's no clear cut answer or the other options to make the test insanely hard and say, use everything you can to help yourself out. We'll go from there. Honestly, I think it'd be kind of interesting to have an opportunity of treating this like 
real life, like industry, because like when you're in an industry, like you have all your resources. What's the joke? Like you have to remember multiplication when you have a calculator in your back pocket. But like when in engineering, like you're going to have all these resources, you can bring up like unique topics to like give a student an opportunity to like figure something out. For example, you can bring up like a, uh, if your class heavily focused on brushless motors and you can bring up like a topic that's similar between brushless and brush motors and then have like a problem around that. And then have students like give the opportunity to like kind of solve it. And so you give them like a few days to try it out. Yeah, that brings up something that I like, I really enjoyed about my thermal systems class where we, the professor decided to not hold any more tests and just increase the weight of our project. I think that's another route some professors might be able to go is just to have a basically a big project that you do instead of a test that thermal using that thermal systems project I had to apply everything I learned in that class plus thermodynamics fluid dynamics and heat transfer and I feel like I learned more doing that project about like real world application and the class than I ever would have like studied stuff into short term memory for a test and then you know, if I ever had to use an industry, I'd have to really like almost in a way relearn it. But now I've kind of been through some of those problems. And I feel like it proved that I learned something, you know, you can't fake really a full heat ORC process design, you have to really work through it. I mean, one of the problems with that is the fact that that project has always been theoretical, though, like you never had to make it takes for example, uh, machine design, like, you know, my calculations say it won't work or something like that, but it somehow ends up working. Or like my calculations say it works and it just breaks. Like that whole real life aspect is something that like is something really hard to like imitate through the uh, theoretical that we do. Like I know for one of our uh, projects in mechatronics, which is my other class was taking, you know, that one you do in person, you present it, but then press just switch it over to a, uh, just a paper. It's like, okay, I did all the saw works. I did these circuit. Thank you. There, there's a program for that. But then I also did the coding for it. And it's like, all right, here's some examples. Let's see if I can make it work without having the actual like Arduino kit or other computer system or software to work off of and see if I'm doing it right. So do you think, though, that a class like statics or dynamics you know, classes that it might be hard to make like a big full scale project because they're not like senior level courses. You know, do you think that those might not be as amenable to having the type of the testing strategies that you've just been talking about? Because it seems for those that you, you know, there's only so much you can do with trying to solve a statics problem. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly it would come down to a class to class thing, but yeah, you know, statics, it would definitely be really tough to apply unless you were to give them some giant trust problem. But then you're going to start looking into, well, is there a computer application for this that they can just use that? Not, you know, there's, there's a lot of definite problems within it, but it's, def, it's, a, it's a really weird issue to approach how you to reduce that cheating because I'd also I'd feel like cheating is a bigger deal even in those lower level classes too, which then makes it like, stand out even more i mean aren't those classes also technically kind of like weirder classes like they let people like realize how hard engineering is and how much time you have to invest and so if they're not prepared for it then like they get this further down their like their coursework they realize that like they don't have like the will or stamina or whatever it is to like keep on learning expanding so like it's kind of nice to help them figure out like early on that like maybe it's not this field, maybe another field of engineering or like some other specialty or focus, or maybe like leave engineering at, at all. So you've both mentioned how your you know normal, let's say project-based class or your um, you know face-to-face -face lecture classes, how they've changed um, due to having to move online. You're both seniors, and so you're both engaged in, or were engaged uh, in your senior design projects. So how did those change due to the fact that you no longer could, you know, finish building something? So I don't think that question really applies to me since I completed my senior project last year. But from what I know, like talking to some students, like there's the professor was like 
trying to figure out what they could do because one project's uh, the student, like they got everything together and they're about to build it and start working on it. But then the, uh, you know, the lockdown happened. And so the professor is saying like, you know, for you, he already completed a senior project. So his professor saying for him, he could like um, do a pass or no pass, but like you can't really do much. So I, if I give you an actual grade, it would be like a B or a C if anything. But then like he is still trying to figure out what he could do for the other two students in the project because they're his senior pro they're the senior project. So my, my senior project was the steering system for the Baja vehicle. Uh, and thankfully we had comp completed that car and we're actually testing it the week prior to the school being shut down. So I completely manufactured and validated the part. Um, so I was basically able to continue with my senior project in, as planned. The only things I just had to make some notes in my report basically saying due to COVID-19, we didn't get to compete with the vehicle and we did not get to do our validation with strain gauges installed to see the actual forces through the system um, and to see if the part actually survived competition. But otherwise, I was able to almost proceed as normal and planned. So reflecting back on the last couple months, what for you has been the biggest negative about essentially having an online class? And what's been the biggest positive, if anything? I guess for both, it'd be like, I can kind of skip class and like zoom through class, like by watching the videos. Like for the rest of that talk, using the PDFs, it's like, I look through it, it's like, I didn't understand what's going on. I had to like actually see problems being worked out. And so I kind of had like, look at it for a little bit to see an example problem, then go on to the homework problems and book problems. Then, uh, but you can also just go back to videos or watch it another time if something comes up, because now that, I'm home all the time. Sometimes things pop up like, hey, can you help me carry something? Hey, we're going to the market. We need help. Gardening was a big project. So there's a lot of heavy lifting and grabbing a lot of soil and all that. I'd say for me, probably the biggest negative is I felt so disconnected and almost cheated that I just felt like I didn't learn as much or learn as effectively through all this. But positively, I was definitely able to manage my time better. Um, since I didn't have to be at school on campus all day, I was able to kind of take care of my mental health a little bit better, be a little bit more relaxed, and then just focus on classes because I didn't have a million other things that I had to do. Uh, so that was like pretty nice, like a nice break that was almost unwanted. <laughs> at, at least at our institution, I think pretty much every university or almost every university, you know, we had to cancel graduation. So we don't have a large congregation of people in a tight space. Are, are you disappointed by that? Were you going to attend? And are you doing anything to have your own celebration at home? I initially probably, uh, I'm actually really bummed about not having commencement. Not so much for celebrating with my family, but be able to celebrate my friends. I have so I have some friends that I we actually went to community college together too. So we've been basically classmates for six years now. And I really was looking forward to celebrating them and celebrating with my professors, all the work I did. It's, I mean, the same thing to myself that I've worked six years really hard to get this degree. And now it's kind of like, Oh, here's a high five. Good job. And there's a nice email from the Dean or something, but go work and work your life away at this point. There's no more. I don't really get a big chance to really sit back and enjoy the moment. Um, I'm probably, you know, once I can, I'm going to have a nice dinner with my family and probably maybe throw a party with my friends or whatnot, but it's definitely not going to be the same as I had been looking forward to since the beginning of the school year. For me, it didn't really affect me that much because truthfully, I never wanted to go to my commencement. I can not really care for it at this point. All my friends graduated last year, so I was really like, didn't have a good like group to graduate with. Yeah, my mom wants to go, but it's like, I really don't want to go, mom. Uh, one thing I do regret is like taking photos. For some reason, that's like the one thing I wanted. I just have my commencement garb and everything and take photos. I didn't even buy my get up yet, so don't know if I can still do that. You can. I was able to buy mine last week. Well, I got to think about that now. He could still walk around the campus to take pictures, too. 
Yeah, true. But it's like it's not the same anymore, you know? Like you're just yeah. doing it ahead of time, I guess. Yeah. For me, it is nice every year to go through this ceremony of putting on my old PhD gown and you know, you can really see on on the the people's faces who attend graduation, both the students and, you know, parents and family. There's this giant celebration and yeah, it's um yeah, it just sucks. <laughs> just sucks that we can't go through that tradition. But did either of you have summer plans maybe to celebrate your graduation that have been disrupted? Yeah, I definitely had some plans. So um, the Baja team was actually supposed to do their last competition out in Illinois uh, in the first week of June. So right now I should be I was supposed to be at school, uh, quickly rebuilding and testing our car from our previous competition and getting ready to go out to June or to, uh, to Illinois. And then from there, I was actually going to bring my car out to Illinois, all packed up with my bikes and camping gear. And I was going to spend the summer basically just driving around the country, wherever I wanted to go camping and seeing all of it before I, you know, really started into the workforce. And now basically I have three weeks off of school and I'll start working in the beginning of June. And from there on out, it's two weeks of paid vacation a year. Uh, for me, I've been really wanting to go back to visit Europe with my friends, but I see my friends out there. And so thankfully I never like actually buy any tickets yet. Cause it was a whole issue of like to figure out when would be the best time to go. And like seeing my, uh, working with my company about that. I'm just going to use that as pity points for, uh, when the holidays came around, like, hey, boss, I didn't get my graduation like vacation, so can I get an extra week? So if you were going to be coming back in the fall to take more classes, and if the classes are all online, as it looks like it's going to kind of be at our particular university, would you want to take off time from school? Or would you decide to just plow through it and just decide to take the classes in the fall? I'll just go through it because it doesn't make sense like in any way to like just ignore it because what could you do if you didn't take classes? Like you can't really get a job. It would be kind of difficult at this point. So you'll be losing money. At least if you go to school, you get financial aid and you have something to do. But then like once this is over, like people still need engineers. And the fact that you're kind of used to working from home, then it's kind of best that you have that yeah, skill set helps with your career because for example if you work at off location or like if you're on an oil rig somewhere and you need something from the office or vice versa like you can do that through a computer and so that's something that a lot of companies will be interested in now at this point yeah i never thought about it in that sense that you're building a skill of trying to learn remotely and work remotely it's an interesting way to look at it if I was coming back, um, you know, a lot of my friends and like the Baja teammates that are maybe in their first couple years of school, I have been actually recommending that they, they take this semester off from CPP and try and just knock out some GEs at their local community college because they're already not going to be going to the on-campus experience. So they could potentially save around $3,000 or so if they just went to the community college. But for me, like once I transferred to CPP, I had basically zero GEs left so that wouldn't have worked for me and I I would continue to go to school in the fall even though it's online because at this point yeah as Human said there's not really anything you're gonna be able to do in the fall you're not gonna be able to get get a job or go vacation or go do any of that you're pretty much just gonna be stuck at home so you might as well continue to make progress in your, your education yeah and I would just recommend to anyone who decides to not go to school in the fall because they really want to uh, you know, have that face-to-face -face experience, and if they're not able to get a job, at least use this time to better yourself. You know, find find some skill that you want to develop, whether it's learning how to program or learning a guitar or something. So that way, when you come out of this, you'll at least have improved yourself in some way. So in the fall, there's going to be a lot of new engineering students coming from high school. And you've spent the last couple of months taking classes in this online environment. Do you have any advice for those new freshman students on how to deal with learning online? 
like the classic move of a freshman is supposed to not go to class and party. And I don't know if that's going to be better or worse now. Cause you know, for me at this point in my career, my college career, I developed a lot of uh, skills and habits that allowed me to really be able to study and push myself through the class on my own. And I just don't quite know how many freshmen are going to have those developed the same way, but it's just go to every class, do every homework assignment. All these grades are going to last with you through your whole college career. So you don't just think you can like flunk this semester and have it'll be okay. And there's like still no guarantee that there's going to be like the pass fail option either in the future. And yeah, just work hard and set up a space for you to study and communicate with your family. If you're going to be staying with them that like, you know, you really need this time to be alone and to not be disturbed. So you can focus on your classes because they want to be disturbing you and asking you to do the dishes in the middle of class when you're actually at college. I would also say it's not just um, building up the study skills, which is incredibly important, but also they're going to be taking you know, math and physics courses, and this is going to be the foundation uh, for the next three, four, five years of college. And then they're going to eventually be in your kind of position. If they have weak math skills or weak physics skills, it may come back to, to bite them later on. So yeah, it's really important to, to make sure that they take their first year classes really seriously make a schedule like and stick to it because that helps avoid the whole flow of time being distorted and everything but it also keeps you like motivated keep going uh another thing would be find a place to study like i know my where how i study at home like i have an awful desk it's like i can't get anything done here i'm so unmotivated and like i used to go to the library all the time and that's where i got a good chunk of my stuff done the last one was try to figure out your how you learn like me personally, I never learn in class. I have to go through the homework and I have to like suffer and figure it out. And that's like how it makes sense to me. Try to figure out what key points, skills, what, what is it that helps you focus, helps you learn that you gain the most from and try to expand on that and kind of adapt to our unique situation we have now. All right. Well, Robert and Human, you've been very generous with your time, but I have one last question before you go. You know, one day the pandemic will be over, classes will resume face to face, whenever that will be. Do you think that there will be any permanent changes to how instructors teach or how students learn? How do you think this is going to impact the college experience? For engineering students going forward? I think at this point professors are just going to be forced to develop new skills. You know some some professors like you are very already we're embracing that online teaching whereas some of like the older guard of professors were still copying their notes that they made 30 years ago and so I think some professors are just gonna have to learn some new technology and new methods that they may have previously not needed to had everything continued as normal. And so I definitely think the classroom is going to change and how they all approach teaching might change. And I think the students are also going to be able to have better time for themselves and uh, maybe not need to go to class every day anymore because the online lecture system is really built up. You know, maybe even more classes will be offered online, which will, be allow, which will allow more students have freedom to their schedule in life uh, to work more and be able to pay for their college easier. Yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping that a lot of instructors will at least think about trying to offer online classes or experiment with offering online classes. It may not work for everybody or even maybe the majority of instructors, but I think it would be great to at least give students options for how they take their classes. I think classes are getting harder, to be honest. Because now that you have at least one semester, or in some cases a quarter, of material out in the world now. And so students kind of have that, and they can save from that in the future. And so professors are aware of that. And so they're probably going to like slowly increase the difficulty of the test, because now that students have different like material to learn from, so it's like they have higher expectations. Robert and Newman, thank you so much for taking your time out of a Saturday to have this conversation and congratulations at 
finally getting your bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. Good luck with your jobs and please be safe. Thank you. You too. Thank you so Best much of luck me. teaching online. Uh, thank you as well. It's been fun. I would like to again thank Human and Robert for sharing their personal experiences of what it's been like to be an engineering student during the first semester of online instruction in this time of the coronavirus pandemic. I imagine this episode resonates with many other engineering students who've been forced to deal with this very difficult situation. Just remember, one day this pandemic will end and life will return to normal. So take care, everyone. Please be safe, and goodbye for now.